Hi right, YouTube, North Carolina, big in the news right now. And let me explain the sad reason why. Because these strange neo-confederate, vaguely racist rednecks in North Carolina, and that's not the entire population because as with any state there are good people and bad people anywhere, unfortunately now want to make the law which will ban not only gay marriage, but civil unions and domestic partnerships. There are two problems with this. The first problem is in the logistics. And that's that now heterosexual couples, you know, man and woman couples, won't be able to get a civil union or domestic partnership. This raises problems with domestic violence laws. It raises problems with the idea of, you know, Jack and Jill want to be able to make medical decisions for one another because they really, really like each other, but they're not ready for marriage. But unfortunately, the state of North Carolina being run by fascists won't let them do that. So there's one problem. The other problem is, doesn't this really remind you of another issue from the late 1800s called um, interracial marriage? The idea that the sanctity of marriage must be upheld. The tradition of marriage in the United States is marriage between two people of the same race. Well, it's the same issue. It's a different name and a different minority involved, but the same bigoted reasons for passing such laws in the first place are still being used every time that a bigoted majority group, usually in the South for some reason, wants to oppress a minority, they trot out the same tired explanation they've been using for over a hundred years. It's American tradition. It's got to be sanctified by the will of Jehovah and Jesus in heaven. Well, unfortunately, Jesus doesn't talk about gay marriage very much in the Bible. And there are plenty of other American traditions we no longer use, like slavery, things like that. But North Carolina predominantly is run by these old white crackers that uh, are still racist to this day and still probably parade around in their Ku Klux Klan costumes after they get done with work each day. And of course, by work, I mean watching over their, you know, tenement farmers from Mexico who uh, tend their, you know, hot pepper fields or their orchards. Uh, and then they go and they drink sweet tea and talk about how bad black people are. This seems to be the running theme throughout most of the Deep South. Everything from northern Florida up to about southern Virginia and over to the border of Texas seems to be this weird, weird part of America where whites and blacks are still unofficially segregated, and I've been down there. I've seen for myself. I went through Georgia. Uh, I went through some of those states. It's weird. Things are a little bit off in the Deep South. It's like the rest of the country is living in 2012. They're still somewhere around 1912. Um, there's no official segregation against minority groups, but they still sort of have this fawning fascination with the concept that they're, you know, because they're white, they're somehow superior, and because they're straight or Christian, they're somehow superior to, you know, an atheist or a gay person. It's really quite sad. And the weird thing is, I mean, some of these states, and this is true about, like, Kansas and some of the Midwestern states, too, I mean, they want to teach creationism in schools, and, you know, they want to have prayers constantly in every government edifice, and if you're not a Christian, then you're never going to get elected. Um, if you're gay, you're basically subhuman filth that's trying to destroy the country with communism, or, you know, feminism is frowned upon. Basically, any modern, decent progress towards an actual ethical system is completely cast aside. And the sad thing is they've got a poll up saying 55% of the population supports this. That You know what that tells me? 55% of at least that polling sample are a bunch of bigots that don't understand the Constitution, they don't understand the secular basis of law, and they probably haven't graduated high school. They probably dropped out to have a bunch of incest children with their cousin. That's what it tells me about the people of North Carolina. So it's rather sad uh, that they're that ignorant. I can see why, though. They're living in a backwater state. It's mostly mountains filled with, you know, moonshine stills. 
That's basically what the state is. By voting on this law, I'll tell you what will happen. If they vote it down, it'll prove to me and to the rest of the logical thinking community of the United States that there are still some people that, that aren't so inbred that they can't think anymore. Uh, really, I've often said before, the missing link between apes and man that evolutionists have so often looked for can be found in any fundamentalist Baptist church. Uh, or Pentecostal service. Those are the missing links between ape and man. They're, they look like humans, they're capable of some rational thought, but they haven't developed to the point where they're capable of using real, reasonable, rational thought. Um, it's sort of like watching a caveman try to make fire and lighting his pubic area on fire instead of the uh, wood he was aiming for in the first place. It's, it's like watching people with some severe stunting of their mental development attempt to form a government. And you can see it reflected in the politicians which they elect. Most of them are just as ignorant and bigoted as the general populace seems to be. Um, and it's rather sad. Also, for some reason, I don't know why it is, I, I fail to comprehend why this is. All of the politicians from the South they seem to be these suspender-wearing, overweight, horn-rimmed, glasses-sporting, Pentecostal-looking idiots um, that always have that fiery accent. Like, they've got this preacher thing going, like this Pentecostal minister sort of guys. I guess that makes people trust them more, because obviously, you know, it's weird if you look at it realistically. Most of those fundamentalists are closeted homosexuals, and they're the most homophobic people on earth. You know, they probably uh, every member of the Ku Klux Klan, you know, fascinates themselves about, you know, having a black girlfriend or something. It's like they're trying to make up for some perceived fault in their own traits, so they develop this strange obsession. It's like Rick Santorum. From the comments he's made, he's probably a closeted homosexual. I personally, while this may seem a little conspiratorial, I think that's actually the case. I think Rick Santorum is, perhaps, a closeted homosexual. Just because his remarks are so off the wall and unbelievable, it's hard to believe that any rational, decent human being could possibly believe such strange things as he does, as he claims to believe in. So, for the people of North Carolina, I would say, if you're one of the rational people down in that state who doesn't support such draconian measures and thinks that the Constitution still actually has a purpose and that it protects people regardless of the choices they make or, you know, their race or gender or creed or whatever, you should get together with all of your like-minded friends and vote this bill down. Uh, just like I believe it was Mississippi with their Amendment 26, you know, sort of uh, trying to ban contraception and abortion, make it impossible to get either. And then you look at Jan Brewer, I mean, it's like the trifecta. You've got the Deep South, you've got Arizona, and then you've got a few states in the Midwest, and it sort of forms this triangle of idiot cultures that don't know what they're doing. So you've got Jan Brewer banning funding for Planned Parenthood so that people in her state can start having, you know, lots and lots of retarded babies, uh, because most of the people in that state are just as incestuous as in the Deep South. Then you got the Deep South, they're constantly obsessed with their religion and, you know, grinding down the gays and atheists. And then you got the Midwest where, I mean, they still run around with neo-Nazi emblems on. And it forms this trifecta of stupidity so that most of the states between the Northeast Quarter and the West Coast, sort of other than Texas, which I'll give Texas credit to, they're a little more, you know, progressive than other states. Most of those states in between the East and West Coasts are vaguely reminiscent of the 1800s. They really don't have a working brain cell among their entire population. So please, North Carolina, prove me wrong. Prove that you're not just a bunch of Bible-thumping idiots and actually do something of value and get out and vote this law down, because it's going to make your state look even more ridiculous than it already does. And that's the way I can honestly say most people in this country see people from the Deep South as somewhat backwards, vaguely racist, extremely bigoted against gays and atheists, closed-minded Bible thumpers. That's how we see you. So you need to prove us wrong if you want to actually wear the title of logical, rational, homo sapiens rather than sub-Neanderthal individual.